Thank you for, oh, for being here. Uh, my name is Ray. I'm a developer advocate for the Google Cloud Platform. What that means is I like to bring some of our best technology to developers all over the world, including Google Cloud and open source projects like Kubernetes, Istio, gRPC, and a lot of other things. Uh, if you have any questions, please, please find me on Twitter at Saturnism. You should follow him on Twitter if you, even if you don't have any questions, by the way. <laughs> um, my name is Baruch Sadogurski. I'm developer advocate with JFrog. Um, what Ray said about developer advocate applies on, ma on, uh, on me as well. Different set of technologies, same goal, helping you uh, getting your job done better. Uh, at J Baruch on Twitter, you should follow me, obviously, because I'm a very entertaining guy, as you will see shortly. Um, but if you are not sure now, we have the Twitter handles on each and every slide. So when you decide, just go and follow us. That's right, yeah. We made it easy and simple. Oh, yeah. What is this, Baruch? Um, yeah, show notes. So we prepared a special landing page for you, uh, in which you can find the link to the slides. Oh, there we go. Uh, here you go. Um, the video won't be tomorrow, but hopefully will be soon enough there. Uh, all the Linux, that's the important part. Everything that we are going to talk about today, um, feedback to show to tell us how awesome we were, um, and some wow. raffle to thank you for being here on Amazon Echo. Probably we should do a Google Home. Uh, uh, right? Well, we have a Google Cloud uh, booth outside that has the Google Home. And we will, we will give one away for you for, for being here. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's... That's the only important page that you need to take a picture of. All the rest is actually there. Yeah, and the rest of the slides are not important at all. Yeah, no, but the, we barely yeah. have any <laughs> slides at all. Huh. Okay. All right. So, uh, everyone took photos, yeah? Okay, good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, we're going to talk a little bit about microservices today. I'm not going to show you, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to tell you the, uh, the, the theories, but we're just going to show you how it works. And uh, this is probably the best application I can ever write and also the most beautiful application I can ever write because I'm not a front-end developer. Uh, so it's just black and white. Uh, yeah. It's custom fonts. It's yeah. not Arial, so you, you put some work here. It's, That's I very impressive. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this is a guestbook application. So this is what it does. If you put your name and the message in there, say something nice, and you click on greet, we're going to do two very, very awesome things. Number one is we're going to write in your database. And secondly, it's going to say hello world to you. So it's the two of the best application put together. Hello world and the end guest book. Guest book, exactly. And they're very impressive. Exactly. That's the best I can ever do. However, we made this into a microservices architecture. So behind the scenes, we have a, a few different microservices. We have the front end the, and then two back ends. And they are both talking to uh, a Redis and a, a MySQL. Redis for session replication and MySQL for the data. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. It's actually you have a microservice for each and every line you have on a screen, more or less. Yes, yeah, that's pretty much. That's it. That's yeah. very impressive. Yeah, that's yeah. Mad, mad microservice skills. Yeah. Like every everything on the, on the screen is its own microservice. Yeah, but you never nice. know which one will be used more, so you need to be able to scale them out separately. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Th th it's very important to have like clusters on each and every one of them. Yes. Very important. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So uh, without further ado, let's go take a look. Uh, the way I have uh, structured this is that uh, we are deploying this into Kubernetes, and we have written quite a few of these uh, YAML files, right? So uh, all, all that is for the Hello World guestbook thing? Y yeah, so there's uh, maybe two lines on the screen uh, here for every line that you see in the application. So, uh, and which correlates to every line you see on a screen? Yeah, two, two of the files correlate Impressive. to the yeah, line. Yeah. The that's, yeah, exactly. that's proper architecture. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So let me, why don't I just open up one of them and show you what's inside because uh, Baruch is probably going to be laughing at this because there are a lot more licenses on the top. Very um, important. Yeah, very, very important. And then there's the actual deployment. And as you can see, there's uh, more lines here. Uh, for every like lines on the screen, we have more deployments here. Can All I right. do Java server faces instead? <laughs> Y sure, why not? Uh, yeah. It will be simpler. Y yeah, but I haven't used that for a long time. That's I actually true. never used JSF ever. Me too. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so I don't think that will work for us. However, in this deployment, this is very important. This is the way that we describe what it is that we want to deploy. Even though it's a very simple application, uh, but right now you can just describe, so how many instances do you need the backend? We need two. At least. Yeah. Uh, high availability. Check. Yeah, high availability. What happens if you want to say hello in a guest book and it's not available? Exactly, for all the people here. Disaster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we need two for HA, of course. 
And then you can specify um, the image that we want to show. And then most importantly, uh, the labels, which we're going to talk about uh, a little bit later, right? So okay. basically what we did is that we applied everything into my Kubernetes cluster. And my cluster has five machines to run this guestbook application right uh, now. That's the bare minimum, you know. That's yeah. yeah, for two for each instance, right? Yep. And this is all provisioning in Google Cloud right now. It's uh, running on GKE, Google. Let Kubernetes. me guess, you have unlimited resources in Google Cloud. Platform. I have a 24 CPU quota. OK, I'm yeah, just yeah. asking. So okay. I'm, use, I'm only using 10 of them. Okay. However, we deployed all of them in here, yeah. So you can see that uh, we have two instances of the Hello World UI. Uh, we have Zipkin, we have uh, two instances of guestbook service, uh, and then we have a front end, uh, sorry, the service load balancer here, which is in green, right? So there's the public IP that if you see it, you can actually go and take a look. Uh, if you do leave a message, please say something nice. We're um, going to show it on the screen, so yeah, please. So I'm no, just no, click yeah. on that. Um, so yeah, so it's a spring application. You can see the little spring leaf icon, so I guess it's working. Let's go take a look. Huh, wait, hold on a sec. No, no. No, no, it should work. Come on. Yeah. We just, we're like 10 minutes in, are we? Oh. What? Didn't you test it before? I, I did. No, I don't think so. Oh, shit. Well, uh, I, I don't think we have time to. F um, do, you, do you have the video? Uh, which video? You, you, sh you prepare the demo, you should have the video. The, the backup video. Yeah, you should have the backup video. No, I thought you were doing it. No? I How can I do that? I don't have on those unlimited machines on Google Cloud Platform. <laughs> but I, I, can but I, I, was on, I was a speaker thinner. That's true. Oh uh, yeah, so are you? Okay. Um, yeah. So okay, so I guess we we're we're done here because the rest was supposed to be the demo. So I think uh, that that will be all. You will get to your okay. beer soon. Yeah. You want to try and fix it? No. No. What, no. What, come on. We, let's we're fix the it. last last session, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's fix it. Let's fix all right, it. All right. So, so let's uh, yeah. go figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's investigate. Yeah. Today we are doing proper investigation. Yeah. Okay. So are you ready? It Wait. Proper investigation. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my that, head? that is pretty new. Are you changing yours too? So that is. <laughs> okay. He, he told me there was some surprises in. So you will be the good cop. I will be the bad cop. All right. So. Um, that is like okay. Now so I'm ready. I, I guess every attendee here, uh, you probably love to see live demos from speakers, and you probably love to see them fail sometimes. Um, so today's for your enjoyment. Uh, I guess this is actually failing for sure. So there's nothing I can do here. So we get, I guess we really have to, to figure this out. So I guess we need to start by looking where all this came from, right? We want yeah. to go, we want to check the, the Docker image. We want to check which Java app we, right. uh, uh, we put inside. So can you show me which Docker image you used? Sure, yeah. So uh, the first thing when this happens is, of course, you check the production environment. You got a production issue. Wait a second. Why do you have a shade and I don't? Because do I'm the bad cop and you're the good okay, cop. Okay, got it, got it. So, so we can actually see all the things that's running in Kubernetes right now. Uh, if the Wi-Fi is working, there we go. Please stop watching YouTube, just saying. So, so here's the, the front end, the UI. Um, and we can actually go and figure out what is actually running here. Now, the first thing that I will check is, for example, I'm going to go to my deployment. And if I scroll down, this is what I deployed. Uh, it should be in the image. And that's the image I deploy, right? Okay. Hello World UI, okay. uh, latest. Latest. Yes. Latest. Okay. What does it mean, latest? Which which version of image is it? It's the latest one. Latest to when? It's, we're doing continuous integration and continuous delivery. This is the latest one, supposedly. So when it was built, what is it related to? Uh, to my machine. I okay. Guess. Yeah. Or, okay. Well, what is it supposed to be? Okay. Okay. So yeah. let's try to to figure it out. Okay. The even latest has fingerprints. Yeah. And that will be the SHA two fifty six of the image. Okay. Can we get that? Yeah. Sure. So let's take a look. So uh, let's go ahead and do a describe, and I can describe the the instance I want to check. And so from here, if I scroll up, so here you can actually use Kubernetes to see what's actually running there. You can see all of the environment variables in case we configure something wrong. And that, is, that seems OK. We have tail checks. But if you scroll up a little bit, here we have the image ID. Uh, OK. First of all, the good news is you use uh, Artifactory, the jfrog.io. Sure. Uh, so we can, uh, we can try <laughs> and figure something out. But, but Let's that's your image. That exactly. Is so the image should be, that's my registry. Uh, and that's your image. OK. Okay, but okay, let's 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 take a step back and see what's inside the image. Uh, you took the SHA-256. Okay, yeah. I can let's make a search in Artifactory and see what's going on. Okay, so Artifactory right here. Yep. 
And um, I guess we can go ahead and click on the, the search icon. That doesn't really look like a search icon. It's, uh, it's magnifying glass. Yeah. It's like Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, fair enough. All right, so, so we can do a check some search. Is check right? some search. Okay. Amazing. Okay, so good news. We already know something. We know that it was version 50 of the image, okay. right? Okay. So now we can go and, and, and check the image. Yep. So, uh, Sorry. yeah, let's, um, uh, we can go here. And um, we can go to the to the directory one level up, one yeah, level and up. and check the Docker info. Okay. And so here oh. we already have all the all the layers visualized, yeah. right? Yeah. So um, do you know what what jar file you put inside? Yeah, sure. It um, should be in the copy, right? Yeah, it should be in the copy. So in the Docker file we have the add or the copy that copies the jar file. Into the application the file into into the Docker. Image. Yeah, so it Let's should be over here. So uh, uh, um, up the jar. Up the jar. Amazing. A lot of information. Which version of up the jar is it? The latest one. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Okay. okay, so uh, right. you, you have no idea what version of application runs in our container. That's I guess what you're saying. No. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Let's go to back to manifest and try to see how we build this image. So okay. we will have a build tab here. Yeah. Uh, all the way to the um, right here. Why yep. is it? Okay. Oh, okay. here you go. Yeah. And now we have the metadata about the build of this image. Okay. We can go to the build browser. So and uh, yeah. Okay. And, and and see what we have here. So we have the general build info. Um, hey, who's that person? Mark. You're not Mark. I'm not Mark. Are you Mark? No. So you think Mark broke it? I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Is there a way to find let's out? Let's yeah. go and see in Jenkins. Oh, okay. So the, the Jenkins pipeline is actually documented here in the metadata as well. So we can so go to Jenkins and, and take a look. I think we're at Jenkins now. Did you kill Jenkins? I didn't do anything. You Did Jenkins die? Yes. Is that is that... Well, I don't know. How many of you really care if Jenkins dies? <laughs> no, no, not much, right? How many of you have you actually have Jenkins disappearing uh, after your build? Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Few, well, yeah. so the thing is, it doesn't really matter because we have all the information in our refactory, okay, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's let's look at le, le, let's look at the modules. Maybe we'll see the Java in is there. That here? Okay. Ah, oh, here you go. Here yeah, okay. you go. Snapshot, the latest. Of uh, course, like I told yeah. you. Good job. Yeah, good right. job. Okay, okay, let's see if we can find the jar here and see if we have the build information about the jar. Okay, how do I do that? Um, I think it's the UI that we are debugging, right? Yeah. Okay. So no, that's not the debug. That that's what? not the, the UI, the fourth one. The fourth one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Here you go. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, here is the jar. It is snapshot, but we can go to its build browser okay. um, right here and, uh -huh. and, and see maybe it has the build information as well. It's also build my uh, oh, pff, This Mark guy, I have strong suspicions about him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's go to build again. Okay. And uh, let's see if here? we can see how we build this jar. All right. Okay, that's um, okay. Let's go to the build uh. the same way. And now we have an information about about the jar file. Uh, in the environment variables, uh -huh. right here, we can maybe find a commit ID and then go, uh, now there is a search right here and I think it's called revision maybe. Let's see, or no. commit, revision, something. Yeah, no, no. no. Should no, be here. this one, yeah, okay. So, what, well, uh, anything suspicious here? Let's try to compare it with the previous build. Let's see what changed. Okay. Uh, so uh, we're on build 50, and we can compare 50 it to, build to 49. 49. Let's see. Uh, uh, all the artifacts are new. That's that makes yeah. perfect sense. We build new artifacts. Okay. Let's oh. go down and see if we have any new dependencies or something. Maybe <coughs> dependencies here. The next one. Oh, okay. Oh, no. I see. Oh. Everything wow. is unchanged. Yeah. We didn't introduce any new dependencies. Environment okay, that's variables. Okay. Those are build related. It's okay. all build info, build info, build info. No. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. no. no. Okay. I think the build was fine. So I guess By the way, do you, do you happen to have a staging repository maybe? Yeah, a maybe. staging environment? Yeah, because um, you know, if somebody told you that, hey, production is not working, what do, you, what do we usually do? We go check staging. So You had staging all along and you didn't tell me. I, I, yes, I had staging all along. Of course, I do proper uh, CICD. I go to staging first. They're just yeah, always the it. latest. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. So in Kubernetes, uh, even though when I show you this view, uh, we are seeing all the instances are, that's running in production. However, in Kubernetes, there's a concept of namespaces. So within a single cluster, within these five machines, we can carve up these virtual namespaces. Uh, so I actually have created a staging namespace. And within this namespace, 
uh, I can also deploy exactly the same application with exactly the same names. Uh, so I have exactly the same reproduction of the, uh, the, the production environment here. So if I actually go and find my staging service, uh, there's the UI, so that's a different IP address. So this is my production, right? This is uh, obviously not working. But if I go to my staging environment. No, oh, it oh, works. Hello there, I guess that definitely works. So staging is definitely works, and, but we do need to check one thing. We need to make sure that staging uh, that's working is actually running the same version yeah. as production. So we can, we can check it by, for example, comparing the fingerprints of the Docker image. Right, yeah, yeah. So, so for example, the thing that you would check, of course, because I'm using the latest tag, which is not supposed to, I guess we'll have to yeah. remember this shot. Uh, can you remember the whole thing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I. You, you got uh, it. I'm good. Yep. You, yep. What? Yep. I I got the last four. You got the first four. I got the first four. Okay. Five. Oh, five. Five. Uh, good five. For you. All right. So so mm -hmm. then I can do exactly the same thing, right? I can say get pod, in staging. So notice I'm using the namespace uh, parameter here, staging. And uh, if I go ahead and uh, describe my pod, let me just describe one of them, uh, the UI. Okay. And let's see if they actually have the same, uh, the same image. You got it. You got it. Solid. That's mine. Solid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I remember the last four. I remember the first four. All right. So everything in the middle doesn't matter. Uh, no. No. Yeah, okay. Sure. Can <laughs> possibly be different. <laughs> All right. So so we know staging is working. And we, we know it's the same image. And we know that there is nothing suspicious in the image build itself. Right. So I guess we have to really just dig into the log, right? Let's if debug production. Yeah. Let's let's interrogate it. Yeah, let's, let's ask questions, and what will we actually do first? Well, first of all, we will actually ask to see what was the error message. And yeah. so on this error page, I think we have some of the best error messages ever you ever want to see. 404 now is classic. That, I mean, that. you cannot get more better than that. 404 now. Well, you can by having a 500 in the same page. Oh, yeah, right, right. It's not confusing <laughs> at all. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a white label error page, of course, because we didn't uh, uh, theme this thing. Yeah, no, so this is a this is, uh, work of beauty. But so the 404 is the error page, and the 500 is the error itself. No, I don't know. I think no pointer is probably it. And uh, one thing is for sure, this is a Java application. That's true. Yeah, That's okay. true. Now, <laughs> error message now indicates Java application. Yeah. Or JavaScript, by the way. No, that would be, oh, yeah, yeah. No, that would be undefined. Right. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah, there, there you go. go. <laughs> see? I know my stuff. All right. So, that being said, what do we do? I guess we logs, have to logs, see, logs. see the logs. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, logs. in Kubernetes, we can see the logs very, very easily. If you know the instance that you need to troubleshoot, uh, we can just go ahead and say kubectl logs dash f. That means follow. Uh, and then, we'll, this Kubernetes will stream the log to you. You don't even have to log into the system, into the machine. If you have the proper permission, this will work. Now, Baruch, I have a math question for you. I mm -hmm. got two instances running here. Yeah. What are the odds for me to find this arrow in the right instance? 50%. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. good with my math. Yeah, OK. So, but, but we're a, a microservices application, right? So I may have more than, you know, just two instances. I mean, what if I do that? What if I scale these to 10 instances? OK. Then I will have 10 of these applications running. OK. Then what are the odds of us finding the log in the, in the, uh, the instances again? 50%. Either you find it or not. What? <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought it would be having one in 10. But I guess uh, you're right. Either uh, you find it or not. Independent probability, mm -hmm. I suppose. OK. Well, ver that's very good. I learned something new. So, ooh. That's, that's not right. <laughs> I, th I think that password was just uh, on the yeah, screen, yeah, wasn't so it? That was your yeah. password? <laughs> nice. Watch out for this video. Yeah. Gonna, how, many, how many machines you told me you have yeah. in the <laughs> Bitcoin is really good investment. Also. <laughs> Do not mind Bitcoins on these projects. All right. So, so we're going to go ahead and see the logs. Right, so I can see logs at Oh, wow, we're really Oh, oh I told you, 50%. Wow, 50 you got the right <laughs> one. That's pretty good. You got the right That's one. That's pretty good. So I can actually see it. But of course, we got really, really lucky here. I have no idea how lucky we are. We 50%. Should <laughs> we should probably go buy <laughs> tickets or something. But 50% is not that great. But if you have this many pods or instances running, sometimes you don't really want to uh, dig into each one of them individually, right? Imagine you have 10 machines. You don't want to SSH into every one of them. So there are some utilities you can use to actually see the logs from all of the pods of the same uh, deployment, for example. So in this case, there are, there are actually two really good utilities. One of them is called Stern. Uh, the other one is called Kubetail. And rather than giving it the unique 
pod instance uh, name, you can just give it the, um, the, the deployment name. In this case, we can just stream all the logs from all of the applications, uh, all of the instances, right? So I don't have to uh, dig through uh, every one of them. So if I were to run this again, and I can see the errors happening, right? But but or, this or not. Or, or not. Yeah, it's 50-50. <laughs> yeah, of course. You got the idea. <laughs> I see. You learn fast. <laughs> <laughs> but however, however, if you are in a production environment, if you do this against your microservices, you might actually not find this very useful because the, the messages will be scrolling down really, really quickly. Yeah, it will be swamped by, by logging and the exceptions will pass through you and exactly. probably won't even notice that. Exactly. And so in Kubernetes, what is really, really awesome is that because uh, the best practice here is that you always want to output the log to standard out or standard error. You never want to write the logs into the file system because the container file systems are, first of all, ephemeral. And secondly, uh, if you don't clean it up because there's no log rota rotator, it's going to take up all the space. So in Kubernetes, what usually people do is to install an agent uh, that can actually capture all of the logs that you output to standard out and standard uh, error, and then aggregate them into a centralized location. Uh, a lot of people on-prem, they will be using something like Elasticsearch uh, or the, uh, the Elk stack, basically, to capture all the logs. Uh, if you're running on the cloud, then um, the cloud platforms would have different tools. So for, ex in, uh, for example, on Google Cloud Platform, um, we, when we deploy Kubernetes for you, uh, we actually integrate all the logging uh, into what we call stack driver logging. So all the logs that you output will be available in a centralized location by default, okay? So for example, I can go into my cluster, if I scroll down here, uh, if I zoom in, right? So I have one cluster here. And then I can look into the namespaces. So remember, I have staging. I have staging default. was fine. Yeah, staging yeah. was fine. So I'm just going to look at in my production default. environment. Yep. And then I can actually drill in into the application I'm looking at. The so UI. Hello, yep. UI. Right? So I can actually see the logs. Um, and of course, there's an arrow uh, right there. Oh, wow. OK. So there's a 404 null right, from an HTTP client. This so we, we are learning yep. a little bit more things. Uh, and then we can also search, right? We can search for exceptions. Uh, and what I found really useful, though, is to export the log to other places. So for example, uh, we can do a near real-time analysis on your log entries if you publish it to the messaging system. Or we can do BigQuery. Or you do BigQuery. And Feel so like Google. Yeah. So what we can do is that um, if we export into uh, BigQuery, for example, it's just a place where you can store a lot of structured data, and then you can just query it. So in a troubleshooting uh, example here, I remember when I was working for a, a hospitality company uh, where you book hotels, and when we get the production issue, we had to SSH into all the individual machines, copy all the logs, uh, do grape. Uh, I write my pr own pro code to kind of figure out what's going on. One of the biggest questions I have to answer 2 a.m. in the morning is out of the 10 machines, is this error only occurring on one machine or is it happening on all of the machines, yep. right? Uh, because if it's just on one machine, it's probably an environmental issue. Um, and if it's on all of the machines, then I know that I won't, I'm not going to sleep that night, right? So, <laughs> yep. so, so, so let's go ahead and we can actually see BigQuery, right? So in BigQuery, we actually have stream all the logs uh, so you can actually see the different application logs. And um, we, then we can as actually ask questions. So in this case, the question I'm going to ask is, I'm going to select everything and then this is a structure query, by the way, against my logs. I can count how many occurrences of this, a certain message is happening, uh, group it by the, uh, the, number, the pod ID, which is the instance name. Uh, and then um, I'm going to just look at today. I can look at multiple days if I want. Uh, I'm looking for a uh, regex expression where you can look at uh, like uh, with a, pr a percent sign for wildcard. I'm looking yep. for exception. It's like, yeah. like SQL. It is SQL, yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing. So I can run this query. I'm going to run this query again. And I can clearly see that there are two instances that's having a lot of issues. Yeah, right? because the rest like seven, four, who counts seven exceptions? It's like, yeah. it's like zero. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we ignore that. So we are engineers. Yeah. So, so assuming that there's just one instance that's, that's happening, let's suppose that you find like, hey, this one instance is just not working. The other ones are. Yeah. What do you do, Baruch? Oh, I kill it right what? away. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bad cop, remember? Yeah, you kill it right yeah, away. Yeah, right away. D don't you need to restart it? Or no? Just uh, it restarted, whatever. Just, I but kill it. All the rest is fine. 
<laughs> it's like well, seven exceptions. It's yeah. like zero. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess I, I guess I will fix the problem very quickly so you can go back to sleep. Yes. Uh, however, what happens if you, it happens again in two weeks? You know, that's a good good idea. We should interrogate it, torture it first. Let's yep. torture okay. it. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Why not? No. <laughs> Why no. not? Well, so what we can do is that if we actually feel... Let's, let's first arrest it. Let's isolate it, isolate. put it in an interrogation room, and let it sure. sweat. Yeah. So we can actually do that. So rather than killing this instance and restarting it, and then you would never know what's going on, yep. just like you're, you're like running out of memory, uh, you have... Uh, some people actually have processes uh, or cron, cron absolutely. Cron for restart. T to restart the JVM every uh -huh. week. That's how you know you're a Java developer. <laughs> By the way, there are cron tabs you can use in Kubernetes as well. And but restart your application every week. No, don't do that. <laughs> what we want to do is actually find the root cause. And you want to do this without affecting your production environment, right? So we can actually do this one thing. In my deployment, uh, if I look at my, my UI deployment, UI deployment, uh, the labels that's associated with its deployment is very, very important because we have the label for the name of the app, uh, the version of the app, uh, just for reference, but then we also have a label for serving. Now, this label is something I added myself. So this is saying serving is true, but the reason why this is important is because in the load balancer, in the load balancer configuration, where we determine which instances to serve, uh, I also have a label here that only will pick the instances that have serving equals to true. And, and the only important part is that the names match. It, ca it exactly. doesn't have to be serving. Right. It can be anything. As yep. long as this convention is met on the both sides, exactly. your pods and your load balancer, yep. it will know how to select the right instances to serve. That's exactly so right. So all we need to do is set the serving label to false. Yep. And we will take it out of service, put it into the interrogation room, and start dealing with it. Yeah. So if I room out a little bit, what I can show you is that uh, all of these um, instances has the tag serving is close to true. We can also just overwrite this uh, tag, uh, this label, for example. So if I want to isolate one of these instances, uh, let me see if I can just isolate this one, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. So I can just update the tag, the label, to set it to false. And now if I go back to see the list of uh, instances I'm running, uh, one of them is actually false. Nice. Yeah. However, if you also count the ones that is true, uh, we still have 10. We scale it to 10. That's the auto-scaling of Kubernetes right yeah. there. But then we took one out of instance, so we should only have nine left. But because we told Kubernetes we needed 10 in the first place, it will automatically restart another one to take over. And we can see the youngster in three seconds uh, lifetime. There we go. Yep. Yep. That's it. That's it. So now we have isolated this instance, so it is not serving anymore. Uh, let's go back and see if the Will our I demo work now? No, I guess that's not the issue. Oh. Yeah. However, we can also just make sure for sure what we can do is to actually establish a pull forward rule, right? I can pull forward, I can get into this instance directly that's being isolated. And I can say, you know what? I want to take a look at it from my local machine, my local port 9090. I want to establish a secure tunnel into that particular instance on that instance is port 8080. And so now yeah. if you go to localhost 9090, you will actually get to... To that particular instance that we wanted to yeah, see. Yeah, and we expect the same error probably. Yes, so Unless if I go there to local 9090... Oh. oh! Hey, who is that person? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> There's always somebody who's always trying to... Somebody, always. always somebody. Yeah, always yeah, someone yeah. who's trying to do this. Okay, yeah, yeah, very yeah. cool. Next will be nice SQ try. SQL injection next. Nice try, yeah. <laughs> In yeah, keep select from, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep on trying, keep on we, trying. We, we, saw, we saw everything. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so, so, so we know now that we look at the log, we determine that maybe there's one instance that has the issue, but it clearly wasn't the case because we isolated it, we tested it, and that's not there. And of course, this is still not working. So we got to dig deeper. This is a very complicated issue. microservices yep, application yep. for a very simple application, but the architecture is uh, something that um, you know you, you have to kind of work through, because oh my god, wow, wow, yeah. yeah. So I got ten instances running right now, right? right? But but because very robust, can yeah. stand a lot of load. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Jeez. But it's not working though, so it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but I can clearly see here that my UI application is talking to the guestbook and it's talking to my SQL. Yeah. 
and it's also talking to Hello World service, right? Of course. So, so any one of these things could be wrong. Anyone. Anyone. All of them. But do you actually trust this graph? Um, did you use V0 to draw it? <laughs> no, no, this is updating live. This is updating live. <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Almost, almost. So, okay, okay. so I did, so yes. Yeah, so if I scale this back in, this will update. This will definitely update. So if I scale this back, right, I, I should be able to see. I should be able to see. Ah, there we go. Ah, okay. It's not video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not video. But, okay. but do you not trust the video graphs? Um, it depends who draw it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the problem, right? Because that's documentation. And in, in, a f in fact, this is also documentation because what I didn't tell you is that these lines of me talking to another service is actually annotated in my deployment. So that is a trick here. That's how I'm drawing these lines. So what oh, that means so is... Oh, you, so you can write here whatever you like. And you it can will write go here whatever. Psst, yeah. yeah. <laughs> line gray. Yeah, yeah, I can. So the problem with this is that if it's documentation, if you're trying to troubleshoot something, what happens? You, this happened to me before, probably happened to you. You troubleshoot something, you dig into the documentation, and after like two hours, somebody tap on your shoulder and say, sorry. Uh, this is outdated. This is outdated, right? Nice. And then, then it's like, oh, no wonder this doesn't work. And in fact, I stay up until 6 a.m. the other day uh, because of a bad documentation. So you cannot trust this. No, never. Yeah. So what we actually need It's is worse than Visio, actually. It's <laughs> <laughs> now, when I think about it. Because you know, th you think this is real, but this half of them uh, is not. Exactly. Right? The, the lines, so the pods are real and the lines are not. Exactly. Whereas, whereas the, the graph that you drew will be all like fake. All, all fake. All exactly. fake, yeah. yeah, yeah. You yeah. don't trust any of that, right? Yeah, that's like a broken <laughs> clock. That's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So what that means is we really need ways to have a full observability into the, into the working architecture. Yes. So how do we do that? Uh, so. In your microservice application, usually this is the hindsight, but you should always have this up front, which is potentially a way for you to observe uh, who is talking to what, and also the messages, uh, especially capturing the errors that's happening in the multiple calls. Because in our case, you know, service A is calling B, calling C, calling D, any one of them breaks could have bubbled up to the first service. It's like, I wish I had a profiler on all this stuff. Yeah, but... So we can, so for the application to application calls, you actually have to trace it yourself. In most cases, you have to add in a trace ID to the header and pass the trace ID and then record the log messages or right. use something like Zipkin. And uh, so with Zipkin, you can actually record all of the calls as well. Uh, and then ultimately, you're going to be able to see a whole call stack across your microservices. So uh, you can definitely run Zipkin on-prem as well. Um, we also have a little adapter that can turn the Zipkin uh, traces, and we can actually capture it uh, on Google Cloud too. So but it it's built in. Yeah, so it doesn't matter where you store the traces. Uh, I'm just going to show you that this is here, but, but you need something like this, uh, whether you run this on-prem or in the cloud, you should be able to go and see, for example, the, the stack. Oh, right. here you go. This yeah, is what, go. what speaks with what in real time. Yes, yeah, so I can clearly see somebody uh, here say hello to garbage collector. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, and I can see that this application is not very effective because I'm making multiple of these, wow, message calls, right? And you can see every one of them is taking time. And one of these things will probably have a 500 arrow. Let's so, filter. So let's yep. go ahead and filter this. And uh, if I scroll down, I can see the 500 arrow because I'm guessing that this was 500 arrow, right? Yeah, we saw it. It's 500 arrow. Yeah. yeah, so we can actually see here, if I click into it, I can clearly see that it made a call. And there's a 500 arrow on the right. Nice. Yeah. And um, oh, we can also see the logs if this is correlated properly with a trace ID. This can actually go back to the logging console to actually see the error logs associated with this particular request. But here we can also very clearly see that it called hello, right? And hello get. And then here's the response. Um, and then here's another thing. And we can see that perhaps hello has the issue because hello is returning 404 to us. Right, so you need some real observability into exactly what is happening. So we, we actually, we, we are still have no idea. But That's, yeah, yeah, but this is still like four or four. That's great, but we don't know why this is like and causing issues. So it's five hundred or four or four. Yeah, it's uh, fifty fifty, as usual. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I wish. Um, what do we do? The log is not so good. So what happens when you're debugging a production issue and 
after all of the things, after you copy all the logs and you grip it, you pearl it, or you search it here, which is a lot easier, and you figure out, oh, I don't have enough logs. So, but, yeah, you know what you do? You go back in time and you add more logs. Right. And then, and then you spend more time to deploy it. No, right. if you go back in time, it's fine. Oh, that's if you true. Have, if you have yeah. a time machine. <laughs> but if you don't, <laughs> well, uh, you should add more logs anyway and then right. try to reproduce the issue. Can we yeah. add logs without, like, redeploying? Yeah, because, you know, like, when you want to add a log in with deployment, you have to first check out the right version of the production code, right? And then, uh, otherwise, you'll be deploying new functionality. Exactly. Do your code reviews, publish it, and wait two weeks for deployment or more or less, depends. Oh, right? and, and also then you need to wait for this error to reproduce itself right. for unknown amount of time. Exactly. So that is not good sometimes. No. We can do better. So uh, this is something very special to Google Cloud. And you actually can use this functionality even outside of Google Cloud as well. You, you just have to attach the right agent to your Java uh, program. Uh, this is called the debugger. So what we can do is to actually pull up the exact revision of the code that is currently running in Kubernetes right now, OK? And I can actually browse the code uh, because I connected with my Git repository. And I can do the first thing that I, I want to show is that I can actually just add a log. So for example, if I am interested in seeing what is actually coming through the application, uh, all I need to do is to say, I wonder what's happening on this line. I want to say the name is the name of the variable, right? You can add that. And of course, as Java developers, the way that we debug is number one. I'm yeah, here. always, yeah. always <laughs> system out print len. And uh, number two, I'm here. Now. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> I'm there, right? Perfect. So as soon as I add these log lines into this console, every time that somebody comes through to this application, on every on any of the Kubernetes instances that's running. Uh, the lines will be locked. So we should just see it now because everybody hitting this. Yeah, anyway. so I'm going to do a few refresh. Well, who do I see the logs? Uh, we saw it in the log. Uh, yeah, did you? Yeah. Uh, so let's yeah, go back what to we see? Yeah, the, 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 login. the login that yeah, we saw we earlier. Yeah. Yep, let's see. My, my heart is pounding right now because uh, it will be really amazing if that just works. That's, right? that's very exciting. <laughs> what are the chances? I do not know. Uh, what is this? Oh, oh, there we go. The name is right, and if I scroll up, I can see one. I'm, I'm here. here. Che but oh, look at this one. The name is empty. This is the null. That would be the null. And so this is a user error. It says always. It's, it's always yep. user. The user did not put the username in there, and so the user got the problem. Yeah. So we don't have to fix this. Of course, we just <laughs> ask people to use it correctly, and we're done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but in this case, I just realized I'm the user. You are. Yeah. So please don't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not at the beginning of the talk, right? But however, however, we can do even more. You know what? Let's let's add some null checks. Null checks are good. Yeah. So can you can you add null checks without redeploying? No, we actually cannot. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I know. Because you don't want to do that. Because then you're affecting your production code. Uh, without going through the right process. But aren't we doing it all the way? We patch the production like uh -huh. yes. open, open jar files and patching the class files inside on the production servers. <laughs> so no? this is not actually touching your uh, class files. Uh, these are using uh, JVM, uh, JV, uh, JVM agents, uh, basically attaching. Bytecode instrumentation. Bi exactly. Yep. However, you might say, wait a second. If I can refer to variables, you can also say uh, model.get. So you can actually get. Uh, you can make calls to the methods to retrieve data. If the method modifies your application, then again, this is not good because you will be introducing unknown behaviors into your production code. So in our debugger, if we know, if we detected that your uh, expression here is going to modify the state of your application, we will not execute this log line. This is absolutely wonderful. But we can actually do more. Uh, how many people here actually ever wanted to say, I wish I can just debug with a debugger, like a step through the code or see the snapshots of the, the variables in production? In production. No, you cannot do it because it, will, because it will stop the world. You will stop the application and people won't be able to access it anymore. 
Well, no, I will just click on like continue. Like that. that and be they fun. will wait until you go through it. Sure, and people will wonder like why is the app too slow, and then they'll call you up, and you say, oh, let me fix it. Yeah, uh, wait a second, I'm in debugging mode here. That's why it's so slow. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So we can even do more. So on the right side, we can even take a snapshot. So what this is is called a a snap uh, uh, a snapshot. It's, this is not a debugging point, right? This this does not stop the world. But what we can do is to say, for example, I can go to my Hello World service here. Uh, I can actually go into my REST template. I want to see what's happening on this line. So now it's trying to capture the code stack. And if I come back here and do a refresh, I go back to here. Oh, and it stops like it was a debugger, but it's not. Exactly. And can, here, I it, can I do it in IntelliJ? Uh, yes. Wow. Yes. In fact, you can also debug your application in IntelliJ by adding these debug uh, snapshot points directly into the IDE. But here, you can also navigate through this object or any object that's in context. And you can very clearly see that the variable that's being passed in is Here empty. we go. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the problem. So that solves the whole problem. Now, you might be wondering, why does not work every single time? Well, that is because the name is being cached. It's in the session. So the session is not expired. And so this is continuously not going to work. So uh, how, how we fix it? Uh, Incognito mode, like we fix all of the problems yeah. in JavaScript. Yeah, or well, you ask the user to restart the application, uh, to restart ah, the, 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 the operating system. Right? Okay, let's see yeah, what's new go. here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. yeah. How you did uh, Nice. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So nobody uh, tried the SQL injection. Yeah, yet. no, that's because we shamed them early. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they did, and uh, that's what fixed the application. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I think our time is almost up. Uh, almost up. Yeah, almost up. So let's go back to the slides. I and just go do through and just just make sure that we covered everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah, there's one really, really cool thing what I wanted to show. What did we forget? Yes. So if you do store the traces on the um, on, uh, on Stardriver Trace, for example, we can generate the distribution graph for you. And we can also compare performance automatically so that if you have a uh, performance regression, we can tell you automatically. Uh, in addition, uh, all of these arrows that's that's You happening. know when we had the, prob the, the regression? Yeah. When you scale down from 10 instances to 5. Yes, that I know. That was clearly a regression. Yeah, that's 50 per 50%. 50 percent. By, by the way, by yeah. the way, how uh, Kubernetes knows which um, pods to kill? Um, uh, well, you, you have to specify yourself. But oh, if you scale down. If I scale down. From 10 to 5, it's going yep. to have to de delete five nodes, uh, five pods. Uh, there's a heuristic. Uh, typically, it deletes the unhealthy instances first, and then after that, it deletes the instance that has the shortest runtime. So it kills the babies, basically. Well, I wouldn't put it that way. It kills the youngest babies. Process. Yes. Process. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what <laughs> I figured. Yep. No, I'm just, yep. just saying. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, anyways, let's, if we go back to the, the summary here, just remember that. In your microservices application, rather than just having it work, when you have issues, you really need tools to help you determine the root causes. You need ways to trace. You can use like Zipkin uh, or uh, any of the other tools like Jaeger. Uh, for logging, you need some kind of uh, centralized logging so that you don't have to dig into individual pods or files yourself. And finally, for debugging, if there are tools that can help you to troubleshoot the instance live, uh, then you can capture a lot more information and fix it much quicker uh, without having to go back to your you know, test and deploy and compare test and deploy cycle, right? And again, Google Cloud has a bunch of tools for you to do this. Uh, and of course, today we also use uh, GFROG to help determine like, what actually went into the build because um, um, you know, a lot of us don't actually use the right practices. And if you don't, um, then at least there are some backup. Right? And, and you should always do the best practices. So, thank you so much for your time. Yep, and again, uh, jevro.com uh, slash show notes. You have all the links there for all the tools that uh, Rachel today. Yep. And um, um, Southern is on Twitter. Yeah. And Jay Baruch on Twitter. If you forgot, it's right there to follow right now. Um, we have a minute and 12 seconds for questions. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> questions. Any questions? Any questions? Photos is good too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> um, 
No questions? What do we have now? Beers? I mean, why people don't care asking questions? Yeah, I think it's beer time. Isn't ah, okay. It? No, that I wouldn't yeah. answer anyway. Because <laughs> we need to go. Yes. Right now. Yeah, all right. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. We'll be around. You know where Cheers. to find us. Yep. <laughs>